Thank you. So we move on to agenda item 12, uh, 2018 and 19 accounts, section 24, statutory recommendations, page 85 of the agenda. For this item, I would like to propose that we vary our normal procedure rules to allow our auditors, the chief executive, and section 121 officer to address council, and then to answer any questions from councillors. After questions to the officers have been completed, I will then invite the leader to move the recommendation, and council will debate and vote on those recommendations in the usual way. Is this agreed? Unanimously? Thank you. So I call on the leader of the council to say a few introductory words on this agenda item. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd firstly like to introduce uh, our auditors from uh, Grant Thornton, um, Julie Maskey and uh, Paul, um, who uh, have worked hard over the last few months to try and uh, get the final position uh, in terms of uh, an auditor's external report uh, on our 2018-19 uh, accounts. Um, I think it's worth saying that clearly the uh, report is significant. It outlines a number of procedural problems that we will now have to take steps to address, and it has made some statutory recommendations which we must take very urgent steps to ensure are addressed going forward. I've never made any attempt to hide from the um, difficulty of this report in terms of the reading that it makes, uh, but as I said in the audit committee earlier, in the week, elected members have the job of providing political direction, a democratic mandate um, to the council and of achieving policy direction that is then implemented by officers and the vast majority of these recommendations are operational and we will need to work in the time ahead uh, to improve the resourcing of our finance team, to upskill our finance team and to try and make sure uh, that some of the issues identified in some of our group, group accounting are, are dealt with by making sure that um, the standard of accounting that you would expect in our individual companies and other entities uh, is managed properly and followed through into how those are consolidated into the council's uh, main accounts. But as I also said at the audit committee on Tuesday night, I think we should thank uh, our auditors. Our external audit is one of the protections put in place to make sure um, that the council's view of itself or its activity is externally checked using a whole detailed forensic uh, set of procedures to do deep and uh, draw conclusions from our paperwork documents and report. And they have found the finance team and then some of the skill levels and, and paperwork and nature of those procedures to be found wanting. As I say, we will take steps now uh, to take uh, action to sort that out uh, as set out in their various recommendations. But they are there to protect the council have protected the council by uh, holding a mirror up to the issues. Uh, now that we have a wider awareness of them, we will take urgent and significant steps uh, to sort that out. Um, clearly, only full council can apply and remove a section 151 officer, uh, and our previous 151 officer chose to leave the council uh, before uh, this evening's meeting. Uh, we have therefore appointed a new 151 uh, officer at the council this evening, and people can join whatever dots they like about that process. But the point is, we now have uh, the rigour that is required and a team that is capable of addressing these issues. We will work hard over the coming months and uh, beyond to make sure that we achieve the standards we want for ourselves. And I am grateful to the auditors for the thoroughness of the report and pointing out what may be unpalatable reading, but undoubtedly is designed to help us move forward. And we will use our transformation programme and the work that I've set to be with the chief executive. Uh, to enable and I do thank Steve for joining us and for helping us uh, in that job. But I'll hand over to Julie and Paul Dottit so that they can set out uh, the recommendations arising from their audit. And I thank them again for their hard work, uh, particularly in wading through some documents that the chair of audit and I were struggling even ourselves to understand why they weren't as complete as they should be. Uh, I'm glad we sort of got there in the end. Bit of a, a steep uh, track to, to, to tread to get there. But now we are here. Hopefully we can move forward and make sure that the next two years of accounting that we go through the audit system are in much better shape, and I thank them for thoroughness and diligence in their work. I now call on Paul Doucette and Julie Mashi from the Grand Thornton, um, the Council's second one five one officer and chief executive, to introduce the report. Following which members can put questions to them. Paul Doucette, I welcome you to this meeting and ask you to introduce the uh, papers for Council, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, 
I will say some preliminary words and then Julie will take uh, counsel through the detailed recommendations. First of all, I'd like to say that uh, statutory recommendations under the Local Audit and Accountability Act are very serious. They are rarely used. Uh, we have had a run of uh, public interest reports in the last 12 months, which are a more detailed version uh, of statutory recommendations uh, and more wide ranging in some respects. Um, generally speaking, both statutory recommendations and public interest reports are designed to be rarely used by auditors, but they are the, the major power that an auditor has. And statutory recommendations must come to full council. And the reason for that is to ensure that all members understand them, all members recognise this as corporate responsibility, and all members have a responsibility for ensuring that those recommendations or the management responses to those recommendations are implemented. So it's very much a full council responsibility to address the issues raised in the statutory recommendations. And the statutory recommendations, which we'll come on to, raise some very serious issues and require the council to take some very difficult decisions going forward uh, to address those issues. And the council as a whole must not shirk those difficult decisions. Management have provided a response which they talk through. It is really important that the management response is monitored and scrutinised and challenged where appropriate and implemented. Um, because these are matters of some gravity in terms of council's financial arrangements and financial governance. And it's extremely important that these issues are, are addressed. We discussed these matters with the audit committee on Tuesday night and both myself and Judy recognised that the audit committee took these matters seriously and noted uh, the importance of the statutory recommendations, which were positive from our point of view. And I think before Julie takes us through the detail, I think I would say that from our point of view, where do we go next with this? We will be following this up rigorously. We will be challenging to ensure that the recommendations the management response is the recommendations are implemented thoroughly. I would just like to flag up to councillors that if, the, if those responses are not followed through, those issues are not addressed, the council faces the risk of further statutory action, including the possibility of a public interest report and including the possibility of an advisory notice about your budget. So it's extremely important that these recommendations are taken seriously and respond to and the issues addressed. And I think the council will find things and will look at things, will find the issues coming out of the management response that, that may be unpalatable and it will have to take some hard decisions. But it's really important that that happens. I'll now hand over to Julie who will take you through detailed recommendations. Julie Mashi, I welcome you to the meeting. Can I ask you again, you asked to address the council how to manage the audit process. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Mayor. So turning to specific um, detail of the statutory recommendation report that is set out in front of you, um, we highlight um, four specific uh, recommendations to bring to council's attention. Um, the first two of those recommendations specifically relate to the arrangements in preparing the financial statements, um, and specifically the extent of the findings that were identified during the course of the audit of the 2018-19 uh, statutory accounts. Uh, we identified as a result of our audit a number of significant adjustments which affected both the reported position for the 2018-19 financial year but also uh, in relation to the 2017-18 financial year also. Um, many of those adjustments uh, ultimately affected the level of reserves uh, of this council. 
We also identified a, a number of specific uh, significant control weaknesses across a wide range of areas as a result of that audit, which we set out on page three of our report. Um, and that comprises a number of areas, including uh, poor quality of uh, financial records and working papers to support the uh, figures reported within the financial statements, uh, a lack of audit trail between those financial records and the uh, information that was presented within those accounts, um, a lack of critical review by officers of those draft financial statements before they were presented for audit, and a number of inadequacies around uh, general good housekeeping in terms of preparation of uh, reconciliations for things like bank accounts, debtors, creditors and other transactions. In addition, we identified a number of adjustments to the accounts in relation to the council's asset records uh, to inform the valuations of those assets that are contained within the council's balance sheet. Uh, to summarise, what it clearly identified was a lack of understanding by senior finance officers in terms of the requirements that they are that they are required to use to prepare a set of financial statements. There is a specific framework that is required uh, as, as prepared by SIPFA that determines how those accounts should be prepared. Uh, that accounting framework clearly has not been followed in a number of cases in preparing these financial statements. So we highlight in our report um, a clear lack of understanding uh, and skills within the finance team to discharge those roles effectively. So we set out in the report two specific statutory recommendations in relation to the financial statements. One in terms of improvements required in the skills and capacity of the finance team to discharge those roles effectively. Um, and also to improve the arrangements around the preparation of good working papers and supporting information to inform the audit of the statement of accounts. Moving on to the, the next item, Mr Mayor, specifically looking at the level of uh, usable reserves of this authority. So looking at the position on both the general fund and earmark reserves of this council, um, prior to the completion of the 2018-19 audit, the general fund levels of this council remained relatively stable. However, looking at the uh, record of the levels reserves uh, in relation to earmark reserves, though that has continued to decline uh, over a number of years, uh, reducing from uh, just over 30 million in 2012-13 to 4.78 million in 2018-19. When you compare those levels of reserves to other uh, local authorities uh, across the country, um, Slau compares um, uh, your, your, your reserves are, are significantly lower um, than, than those other authorities nationally in comparison. Um, as a result of the audit process that we that was conducted for 2018-19, um, one significant adjustment was required to the accounts as a result of, of an over approval of anticipated profits for one of the council's commercial entities. Um, the consequence of that adjustment um, has effectively reduced the council's available reserves by just over £7.5 million, pounds, which effectively has now reduced your general fund reserves at the end of 2018-19 to just over half a million pounds. Now, it's important to highlight to this council that uh, obviously our audit work for the 2019-20 and the 2020-21 financial year is still yet to be conducted. And so it's really important that members recognise the significance of this in that the undertaking of those additional audits may indeed find further concerns uh, affecting that position. Um, the final area to highlight is around the fact that the Council has obviously clearly identified a significant savings programme that will be required going forward to ensure um, a good financial management sustainability going forward. And so we are highlighting to the Council the fact that, that it's very important that the Council puts in place appropriate arrangements and medium term financial planning uh, improvements to replenish its level reserves at the earliest urgent opportunity. Final areas specifically covered around uh, group uh, group arrangements. 
I think it's important to highlight to Council that we've not conducted a detailed review of the Council's um, uh, group companies as part of our audit. The matters that were set out specifically within the statute recommendations report is specifically as a result of findings that have come to our attention during the course of the completion of the audit of the financial statements. Um, our 2018-19 audit identified a number of findings, uh, specifically in relation to James Element Homes, we identified that a specific company does not, at present, operate its own financial systems and records to record that specific company's financial transactions. We understand that all of those transactions are processed at the moment through Council's own financial systems and records. There are separate um, account codes to separately identify those transactions, but it does rely on the ability of officers to specifically identify and isolate those transactions. To, um, to specifically identify those matters that relate directly to the company. Uh, so therefore, we highlight to the council that there is currently, given the current arrangements of risk, that um, specific transactions relating to that company have not been identified and are uh, within the council's own financial data. Um, as a commercial organisation, it is important, given they have their own separate uh, accounting, legal uh, and uh, accounting and tax requirements, that those um, arrangements are put in place to specifically uh, and separately identify uh, the, the financial controls and the financial transactions of that, of that, of that uh, company. Um, other items that have been brought to our attention as part of the work, we also identified uh, in reviewing the, uh, the records of James Ellen Holmes as part of our group accounts audit, that a staff audit was commenced on James Ellen Holmes for the 2017-18 financial year. However, for, for, for reasons that it remains unclear at the moment that we've been able, unable to establish, the audit for the 2017-18 year was never completed. The audit was certainly commenced, and indeed, if you sort of onto the public records for, for Companies House, in fact, a draft audit report was added to a set of accounts for James Edmund Holmes and later redacted in a subsequent version. Um, it's really important that a uh, statutory audit process is undertaken um, to, to give this council assurance around the, um, the, uh, the, the, the adequacy of the financial records of companies that are um, within the oversight of this authority. And so it's really, uh, really important that that is uh, undertaken as a, as a process. Um, I can, however, assure the Council that um, new auditors were appointed in 2018-19 and that process has continued subsequently. We did need to consider that as part of our financial statements audit in terms of what potential impact that would have on our 2018-19 audit opinion. But I'm satisfied that the absence of the audit process in the 2017 meeting accounts um, does not materially affect my opinion on the Council's group accounts for 2018-19. Uh, finally, I, I draw to the attention uh, the, the Council's arrangements in relation to um, officers who uh, fulfil the roles both of uh, officers of the Council but also have been appointed specifically um, as directors to, um, to the Council's commercial entities. Um, it's very difficult, therefore, for the Council to be able to challenge the commercial operations of such companies uh, and ensure it operates in the best interests of the Council when officers effectively are fulfilling a, a dual role for both council and company. Um, we have set out in our statutory recommendations that the council undertakes a detailed governance review of its commercial operations and puts uh, appropriate ranges in place to manage and mitigate any potential risks of conflicts of interest. Um, Mr. Mayor, I'll pass over to, um, I believe, to the uh, uh, Section 151 officer who will now provide the management response on behalf of the Council. Or um, maybe uh, can I ask Chief Executive to set up the Council's response to recommendations before the Section 151 uh, after the explains. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, and uh, thank you, Grant Thornton. We welcome um, the report of the auditors and thank them for uh, their forensic work that they have carried out. You will utilise this work robustly on our journey of financial recovery. 
We fully acknowledge the seriousness and urgency of our current situation and we are determined to address the challenges we face, making sure that we get the highest quality financial management in the future. We want you to know that we are totally committed to robustly and proactively addressing this situation. My previous chief executive on taking role was to radically transform and modernise the way we work and to redefine how we deliver services to our communities. We are two years into our transformation programme, having launched the Our Futures programme in July 2019. Through this programme, we have designed and recently implemented our new operating model, an ambitious programme of work which we have continued despite the challenges presented by COVID-19. This has validated many of our concerns with our financial management. However, because of the work that we have done, we have never been best placed to turn this around. As can be seen from the management responses, we are committed to resolving the weaknesses as reported by the auditors and indeed any other matters that are identified. We have already brought in high skilled um, and experienced staff to tackle the issues and to get our financial processes back on track. We have instigated a re reinvigorated and refocused strategic finance board that will oversee, from an officer perspective, progress on this. And I'm suggesting that we engage fully and seek the support of a scrutiny cabinet working group on a quarterly basis. We will come back to full council annually to update all members. In doing all this, we will ensure that we provide better value for money for the taxpayers of Slough, much better evidence of the stewardship of taxpayers' money to all of our stakeholders, and must secure the financial future of the council and the borough. We do not underestimate the time a financial turnaround will take. These typically take around four years. We're going to try and do it much quicker than that, but they typically take four years. Stage one is the identification, the change of direction, and setting up excellent practice. Stage two is the embedding of that practice and issues that will come out throughout that time. The Our Futures programme has recently designed a new leadership structure we have a new leadership team. This gives us the strategic and leadership capacity to move this forward and take decisive action. We're leading our team through this, we have already begun the identification of opportunities. This will allow us to refocus our transformation program to ensure it is targeted in the right areas to support our financial challenges as we move forward together. Thank you, Mr. Mann. Thank you. Can I now ask uh, Section 151 officer to explain what plans are in place in the light of auditors' findings? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to begin by stating our absolute commitment to addressing the recommendations that our auditors have made, and that we have every confidence that we can address these matters. This will, however, take us time to do so to the quality standards that we want to achieve. And I have no doubt that there will be some challenging decisions for members of council to take. We have, however, already started on this journey. And you can see under the first one that references financial capacity and skills, we've already secured resources to come and work for SLAL. By way of example, one of those is the UK's leading expert on local authority accounting, and one is an expert on commercial finance, business cases, and major projects. They will not only be here to help us drive through the accounts and financial management changes, they'll be here to upskill the Council's own core team. Gaps in that team will be addressed through interim resources, and in the longer term, we will review the Council's financial structure and come forward with a permanent enhanced structure for that service. Equally, we will be looking at training and development, be technical training, leadership management, business planning, and other relevant matters. Second statutory recommendation about the preparation of financial statements, we will begin with a comprehensive account plan. We will link it to the work and plan of the auditors. We will have a training plan, a communications plan, and a resource plan. Most importantly, we will have a three-stage quality assurance process. So everything that is prepared is vetted and verified by the individual doing so. However, we will then add to that a technical review of every individual working paper before the accounts are issued. And there will be a further stage, which will be a sign-off review by a senior officer to sense check this 
before it goes to our auditors. We're going to adopt a whole team approach. We're not going to restrict this to one or two people and give you single person risk. We're going to get a whole other finance team working on this. That will upskill them, strengthen their experience, give you security for the future should anybody subsequently move on from the council. And again, the training and development will form a major part of this. We have a suite of training materials and that work will be undertaken. On the third item, which is the levels of usable reserves that has been referred to, we've gone, as the Chief Executive said, a robust process, a review of our base budgets, looking at all the savings proposals that are already committed to by the Council, looking at pressures, mitigations and monitoring. And we will have a complete suite of savings proposals for the following financial year. There will be named individuals, named departments responsible for these, and they will all have a robust business plan and action plans underneath them. As to the uh, reserves builder, we are suggesting this will take place over five years. We'll bring forward a figure as part of the preparation of the 2022-23 budget process for members to consider. On the fourth and final recommendation, references financial governance and controls. Again, we have started this work looking at our third party organisations. We will make sure that the organisations are delivering to your requirements. We will undertake a review of the financial transactions and financial information that they supply. We will look at the senior responsible officers and any other necessary work that is required. We should uh, slough council that is receiving the information and the service that it needs to do so. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you to everybody for the reports. Now, members will be aware that the time to the matter was discussed in detail at Audit and Corporate Governance Committee held on Tuesday evening, and a number of members between are in attendance under Rule 30. In order to allow a fair opportunity to everyone, I will begin with taking one question from any member who has indicated that they would like to speak and then come back to any members who may have any additional questions. And when putting the questions, can you specify who the question you are putting to? Thank you. Any questions? Councillor Stratton, who are you asking the question, please? I'd like to, I've got two questions that should be answered. But, um, firstly, um, I'd like to put it to our second one, one officer. Um, given the statements in past few budgets and this year's budget, and with the fact that our reserves uh, weren't what they should have been, was this year's budget Great and balance, all of those issues. And in those two budget meetings, we were assured by the leader and other leading cabinet members that our financial management and planning was excellent, as was um, confirmed by SIPA and other agencies. Are those statements, in your view, incorrect and should be um, challenged? And just we should be noted that they, that they are not excellent and were not excellent because, as I said in the previous meeting, if we put garbage information into the system, we get garbage data out that can show uh, whatever this organisation wants to make itself look better than it was. I think on, on the two points, uh, the budget was certified as a balanced budget, the so income equaled the expenditure. It was a balanced budget at that point in time. There was acknowledgement in the statement on the budget about the risks that the council faced. Obviously, those risks have increased, hence my comment about challenging decisions that may be needed in the future, but it was a balanced budget at that point in time. As to the uh, comment about the quality of the financial management, I think we acknowledge that we are going to improve that, absolutely. We are bringing in absolute expertise to assist the Council in the future. We are committed to working with all our existing staff. You have some really good, excellent staff, and we will work with them and we will enhance their development. And if there are gaps, then we will bring in infant resource to address them. Councillor Kelly. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think the question is roughly the same as Councillor Sutton's. I'll ask it anyway because I have three questions, please. As to the finance team, um, the current, was the current leadership and finance team aware of the issues raised by the audit when the budget was presented on March the 8th? And did that make the budget, in your opinion, was incorrect or correct? Um, second question, were meetings held in December with the leadership team to discuss the scale of the issues? Were they aware of it in December? And the final question is, you mentioned uh, the next financial year. Given the urgency of the situation, are we looking at something before then, um, budget-wise, uh, bearing in mind the scale of the issue that we have in front of us? Thank you. It is slightly difficult for me to comment on some of those because I physically wasn't at the council. I will endeavour to do my best. To what extent people were aware I believe reports were presented to the audit committee over several months, so I have no doubt issues were discussed at that meeting. I have no doubt that matters were uh, brought out. I do not believe, but I cannot be certain about this, that the full quantum of what the auditors eventually identified was known, because obviously that will come at the end of the audit process. You will appreciate I was not here. I'm reflecting on the information I have received. Likewise, I'm sure the leadership team was aware of the audit as it progressed. Again, that was not a completed audit. It's not reflected on anybody here. Once you get to the end of the process, you can look at it holistically and see the impact. Uh, if I understand your third question correctly, we are not giving a date. You will have noticed as to when 1920 accounts will be produced. We are going to absolute root and branch review of everything. We are going to make sure this is of the highest quality. And then at that point, we will submit the accounts to the auditors uh, for an audit at that time. I cannot put a date on that, if that is what you were uh, uh, referencing in your question. Councillor Council Valiwal, and then Council David. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, my question will be to the auditor, but first I'll, I'll make a few statements. Um, well, the next section will be make the statements. Uh, okay, prefer, fine. Okay, I'll okay, appreciate question. you can answer the question. Thank you. Okay. My question to the auditor is they have mentioned that uh, James Allen and some other side arms of the Slobber Council, which are working as an independent company or trading as an independent company. Uh, I'm sure the accounts which they held it and uh, the auditors, and those auditors, they should have been responsible for doing the having the validity of those accounts which were held and why those sort of uh, anomalies and uh, discrepancies which happened which we were just picked up say uh, 1920 uh, and 17 uh, 18 19 even previous auditors th those sort of big big figures which they have come was there some sort of uh, lack of audit by the previous auditors so that you know all, all of us can pick uh, this huge uh, apps have come up? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Um, I don't think it's appropriate for us to comment about the work of the previous auditors. Um, what we can say is the audit of the 18. And Tim Cows identifies some adjustments, uh, prior peer adjustments. This will happen sometimes a little bit. Um, and we've obviously identified those and they're reflected in our audit uh, findings report that went to audit on Tuesday. Um, but I'm not in a position to comment on the work of, of, of other uh, organisations who audit um, and uh, previous audits of the council or James Eleven Homes. Thank you. My concern is to um, CEO, I should say. Um, residents have had to read this, these reports and they'll know that now there's going to be, um, you know, frontline services will be deeply impacted. I had asked 
for a public apology to be made to, to residents for the huge failings, and I hope that that will happen. Is that a question, or oh, I thought it was, I thought it was a statement. Okay, no, I mean, it's, of course, it's deeply regrettable um, that the situation has arisen, um, and you know, as we go through and understand how we close the gaps. Um, we'll be having conversations with, with our residents around that. Thank you. Councillor Greyvold. Thank you, Mr. Uh, my question is in relation to the financial government and our dealings with... Councillor Greyvold, can you stand up? Sorry. Uh, that, sorry. Um, my question is in relation to the financial governments and particularly in our dealings with third party organizations. Uh, given that at least one of them, which we've been highlighting, has little or no financial accounting conventions or processes in place, what are the plans for our short term dealings with companies like that? I know the long term probably will be to make sure that we're dealing with companies that have some sort of accounting conventions in place. What are the short-term plans for such companies, please? Thank you. We'll do it with all of these organisations, irrespective of their size, uh, materiality or significance. We will be meeting with them all. We'll be undertaking a review of every one of these organisations and we will be working with them to ensure the highest possible standards. We will not be accepting anything less loud and the best and best that is required from each of those organisations. Thank you, Councillor Shreve. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, my question is to Section 151 of you, sir. Um, one of the recommendations, one of the issues highlighted in there is the number of interim staff appointments by Council. Uh, my understanding is yourself, and you are bringing in a few more interim um, staff um, to sort of address the immediate issues. What is the plan that you, know, you will start build? Uh, so I have a permanent team, a finance team, then council uh, from the start rather than you know, sort of do the job and then hand over later on. It's not a case that the interims will do the job and hand over. The interims will work with permanent staff from day one and indeed have already started doing so. I think given the uh, serious nature of this, we will be uh, uh, optimistic to assume that existing colleagues can on their own actions. So the leadership is falling in the time scale that you would desire. But these are really skilled people that have put in a lot of time and effort in already to assist SLAL, and they, they are working with our existing team. So what will happen, there will be a continuum. Temporary resources here now, working with your permanent team. We will review the permanent team to make sure that it will be sufficient for the future. The interim resource will eventually come down and the permanent team will move, move on. We have to have both. You have to have a mix to achieve what we need to achieve. Thank you. So Ryan, please. Uh, thank you, Matt. That's the question to the Chief Executive. Um, how much seem to work on the council to continue and uh, make the improvements? Um, thank you. Well, one by one can confirm this, but we have um, uh, funding already approved in the budget um, for 700,000, two tranches of 350 each. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I've got two questions. One for the second one, five, one. It's taken quite a long time to uh, get our 1819 accounts to the audit stage, and obviously, there's potential issues in two years account, I suppose. How confident are you that these new accounts can be brought forward to the auditing process much more quickly in identifying particular issues early on in the process rather than wait almost three years before we start seeing these issues come up? That's the first question. Uh, second question is for the uh, auditors. And that is basically, obviously, you raise a number of concerns and, and the council has come forward with uh, a number of uh, measures to uh, rectify the issues. Are you confident that these measures being put in place by the council would fix the issues going forward? Or do you feel there are still some shortcomings uh, that need to be uh, 
uh, put in place. Thank you, Mr. Madam. On the first question, we, we are not putting a date on by when we will deliver the 1920 and beyond accounts. We will give this council the highest quality. We will work at pace, but we are not able to tell you when. We are not going to be slow. But the most important thing is that the job is done correctly. It is a boot and branch review. It then gets you an absolutely stable place for moving forward in the future. What I would further advise to the chief executive has said, we are uh, recommending that we come quarterly to a cross-party group, so that it is not that you will not be aware on a staged basis, but we are not committing to a particular annual set of accounts by a certain date, but we are trying to engage, keep people informed as we go through the process. Uh, I think in terms of uh, our confidence um, and clearly, the report sets out all the things we identified from 1819, um, but we've had some very positive responses to the recommendations. Um, we are aware that the, the new finance team has a good track record in delivering high quality accounts, delivering them quickly, but we're also aware that it has been pointed out by Section 151 officer. This is not a quick job, it will take time. To, to produce a robust set of 1920 accounts that are high quality, uh, that can be audited in a timely manner when they are produced. So I'm confident in the, the direction of travel, but recognising some of the inherent weaknesses that our report has flagged out, it will take some time to actually get this right. Um, and I think we, we're probably not going to get fully back on track in terms of the time of sales for that review audit uh, for a couple of years um, because it will take time to get these accounts right. Um, so confidence, yes, but we'll be watching this very closely. Councillor Lillis? Yes, I simply wanted to provide Councillor Kayley's answer about when the political leadership of the council became aware of some of these issues, because it would seem rather absurd to ask that to one by one so when I'm sitting in the room and can give him an answer. Um, I first became aware of the significant liability issue we had with our children's trust in the summer of last year, and then a transition group meeting was set up with the DFP and our Commissioner Trevor Doughty to look at the financial pressures relating to that. Um, that led to part of the justification for our capitalisation request when that became clear that the Children's Trust couldn't settle its debt of uh, about four and a half million plus its overspend of, of, of one and a bit. Um, the business rates liability we also included in our capitalisation request. I became aware of, I think, in October of last year, and the issue about the uh, error in the 2017 uh, 18 accounts, uh, which were two and a half million, and then the four plus million pound error that then the same error was repeated in the 18. 19 accounts that was flagged up to us by the auditors around the middle of March. I can't remember the precise date, Julie may well know the meeting in which she uh, pointed that out once we received some further council papers. Um, that was after the cabinet had approved the budget, and I think after the council had approved the full budget, it was certainly in that sort of tail end of March period. And that obviously led us to then uh, to make subsequent adjustments uh, to re reflect that figure. Um, and as I say, that's a two, two, two and a half million pound error from the 2017 accounts that because of that profit treatment was made the same in the 2018 and 19 accounts became the area that made, we had to make uh, the adjustment to the reserves and I discovered that from the auditors towards the end of March. Uh, so I hope that avoids uh, a doubt about, uh, about that in relation to Council Kelly's wish to have an answer. And further questions uh, to the presentation? Councillor Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, I do have several other questions. Um, first one to Julie. Um, in the, the, the last audit uh, meeting, um, the statement made that the change element had made to be audited. But you just said that there was only a draft of it, which was really uh, um, taken back and uh, uh, not. not the draft audit was submitted, but then removed because it, there was an issue with it. That's very unusual, isn't it? Can you give me your view why someone would remove that draft issue 
the audit going to happen. So, uh, uh, Councillor, just to sort of clarify specifically uh, the points that I raised. So, a full audit was conducted by the auditors of the company for 2018-19. Um, auditors were also appointed for 2017-18. Um, the audit was commenced. Um, what we, it's, it's a public record, you can look on company staffs even as we speak. What we can see is a draft audit report unsigned was attached to a set of 2017-18 accounts for James Dunn and Holmes. There's a subsequent filing which removed that audit report um, at a later date. Unfortunately, I don't have the specific dates of when both those um, items were, were added. So, really, a, an audit process was commenced in 2017-18. We've had that confirmed by council officers. Um, when I uh, made further inquiries as to the reason why that audit was not completed, um, the response I've uh, been, been provided by officers is that there was concern raised by um, officers who are, in, who are who were at the time also directors of the company that they um, had been some uh, difficult relationships with their uh, their appointed orders at that point in time, and they were concerned around risks of uh, delayed filings with, with company's house. I don't unfortunately have any more facts than that uh, than to confirm that the audit was not completed and the final signed audit report was not um, uh, was, was not attached to those accounts that were filed with company's house. Following on from there, um, just to show everyone's aware, the limited companies are not subject to the same protection as local authority. Should you find there are serious issues with those limited companies that need to be reported to our financial organisations and other bodies, will you be passing those on quickly and what actions could come of that if, if there are anything half as drastic as what's gone wrong with our own actions and procedures? Um. Just to clarify, I'm not the appointed officer for either those, those individual companies that, that, that you specifically refer to. My duty is to undertake the audit of the council and, and, and its accounts as, 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 a, as a group. And so, clearly, we've already identified um, specific issues around the governance arrangement in terms of how the council is interacting with those group um, entities. Uh, we obviously review specific work that is undertaken by the individual appointed auditors of those companies are required as part of in my opinion on the group accounts of this council to take into consideration any significant findings from those individually appointed auditors before I'm in a position to issue my own opinion on the council's accounts. But looking at specific um, conclusions that were raised as part of the 2018-19 opinion um, for that, uh, for those commercial entities, um, the, the audit uh, findings reports and audit opinions do not highlight any specific uh, or view of concerns. I've reviewed um, the, the specifics of the opinions. The opinion does highlight the fact that the 2017-18 accounts were not subject to an audit. That highlighted specifically in their opinion. So um, I will bring obviously to the council any matters that come to my attention in conducting my responsibilities as a group auditor for this council. But just to clarify, I, I don't specifically undertake the individual work in relation to the audit for those individual entities. I'm struggling. I'll yeah. allow a couple more questions. That's fine. I'll allow a couple more questions, but we need to get on. Thank you. This is a rather serious matter and, and it shouldn't be constrained by time. Um, and again, we reflect badly on the advice from the auditor that we are given time to scrutinise it. But perhaps our section one, new section 1.1 officer could tell us what he would do if those findings were found in those Liberty companies that he, I, I suppose, is in some way responsible for. If anything is not correct, then we will take all appropriate action about any such matters if I became aware of any such matters in the future, I guess. Um, going through the report, and as I said at the uh, audit meeting earlier, uh, it's not just an issue with our finance officers. It's endemic throughout the organisation in the reporting by various departments of um, their spend and uh, income coming in, um, and obviously of HR um, in the performance management, management of the staff's capacity and capabilities of doing the job effectively. The, the other 
point is in as a sudden, is there a question there? there is a question keep making there. I think, as I said earlier, give me constant, listen to me what I'm saying. You'll have opportunity in the next section to make your statements. It's I've already statement. asked other council to not make stations, uh, statements. You've got quite right to ask questions and I'm allowing that, so please do okay. ask the question. Okay. We'll come back to that at a later point then. My, my um, next question is actually to our CEO. You, you said that these statements will come back annually. The section 151 of the just said quarterly is advisable. Why aren't those coming back to the full council in, in the same way um, as he explained? Why shouldn't they come back to the full council quarterly and not the overall? Because it is a responsibility of the full council to be able to ask and address things. And, and they are serious. So I would request that either you, you revise that to every. every quarterly or every six months until we get on the straight and narrow on this. The final question for you then is potentially, you, you outlined the costs of you that we're just signing up for the raise on up from just under 100,000 to 425,000 roughly as of December this year. When will we have that final cost and will we be seeing similar costs incurred for the next two years audits? Councillor, the final cost of the audit will um, be provided uh, to officers first uh, comment uh, once uh, the audit is finally signed off, which will be resolution made. But the process then is that that uh, cost um, will go to the uh, FAA, the appointed body, for their scrutiny and challenge. Um, and they will make a final decision on what that fee will be. Um, I think it's fair to say they have a lot of work to do at the moment, so how could they make that decision? I, I can't be sure. In terms of looking forward, I'm looking at 1920 uh, and beyond, there are already uh, scale fees in place under the BCA regime. Um, we will be proposing an audit plan of 1920 due course, that audit plan will take account of that scale fee. Of course, it will take account of uh, both the specific challenges we have had in South, and it will also take account of regulatory changes that have existed in the audit market, which is not specific to SLAW, but affects all authorities. So, in terms of 1920 fees, um, all authorities had a variation on their fee to reflect those changes in the regulatory market. So this is quite a slow process, which is unfortunate, um, but because there are a number of parties involved, uh, including MHCLG at a very high level, who supervise uh, this, and the LGA, who uh, supervise the work of the USAA, it's quite a time-consuming process. But uh, of course, as soon as uh, a figure is available, that will be reported to all the community. Um, and and we'll take that from there. If all the uh, questions are finished, then I may I remind members that the oh. Mr. Mayor, just a quick one. Um, auditors, question to the auditors. Auditors. Uh, if I'm correct, the auditors just mentioned that the audit for uh, uh, 2019 and 20 is going to start imminently. Um, because certain discrepancies and anomalies they have been indicated in the previous audit. Probably, if you start the audit for uh, 19, uh, 19 and 20 straight away, probably there will be still some more. And on these says because same um, financial officers they were they were doing it as our um, new team is in place. If uh, what is your opinion if 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 some time has been given to them so that they can uh, perform their internal introspect um, those uh, accounts those issues which which were. Uh, 
going on for some time, and they have been corrected, and rather, uh, and uh, all uh, whatever needs to be highlighted and brought to the surface, and they have got a chance to bring it up once everything is on the surface, and a clear picture is um, on the on on the slate, and then you start the audit, and that may give us a better. Uh, uh, so, Dali, while I'm doing the question. All right, I finish. Thank you, uh, Councillor. Apologies for any confusion. Why? What I meant to say was the 1890 audit uh, will be signed imminently. It's Section 151 officer has set out a uh, route and branch review of the council's financial uh, reports and arrangements taking place, and we will not be uh, undertaking that audit until Section 151 officer is satisfied. That those accounts have been properly prepared and robust. So we will certainly be giving the council plenty of time uh, to prepare those accounts too. I'm assuming there are no more questions. Well, thank you very much then. And so may I remind members that the normal debate now apply and in accordance with that I now call on the leader of the council to move the recommendations as set out in the report. Council Sabah, is that seconded? I may the second it and I'll have to speak now. Thank you. And first of all I'd thank the hard work and um, they've done Sure, the council signed off. Uh, it's been a difficult two years supporting committee to get to the place they are. Uh, recommendations have already come out from the councils now. I've got full confidence in the new section one five officer and his 80 that's coming in to get through this difficult process and to ensure that we don't end up in a situation again. And while I've said cheer all day, that we'll continue and hold to account <coughs> in this process to ensure that the committee does everything not to end up in the same situation again. Thank you. This item to debate, and uh, now if the member wishes to speak on this item, please. In can I uh, ask Councillor Daliwal to speak first? Because I've asked him that he can make his speech. Oh, thank you. In that case, then I'll give uh, three minutes to Councillor Strutton. Okay, thank you. Um, as I was saying before, the member. And uh, 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 maybe stops again. Uh, the highlight is not just our finance department that's at risk, uh, at fault here. It is senior management, middle management, all the way down in the how they're reporting into the finance. It also includes because how a legal team did not address the issue of the tribe using and put stop to that and reduce the financial state beyond that on me. Um, so, so there is, a, as I've said before, about performance management and, and about HR's involvement in how we in the people who work for us. The number of uh, contract staff that we have on our books, which is just under um, 403. 400. It's about three, 370. Will the interim staff on that on that on that payroll who are on our books who haven't really been full time invest in them because they're not full time employees as such? And, and or and are we going to use the money that we save by terminating their contracts and getting in new interims who are capable of doing the job? Um, to try and save some of the costs over the next few years of, of delivering these improvements. Um, and um, how are we really confident that, uh, you know, I have to, in, in the auditors and the new team, yeah, that you're doing. But it, my concern is how we do the annual reviews of senior officers, directors, and everything else to make sure they're up to the power, uh, up, 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 up to the job, and, and in a position to continue. I've raised this issue several times in the past. Boo-boo for raising it. 
improve food for questioning the excellence of our financial reporting uh, and planning. Um, and here we are today in this position. Um, I really would like some a bit more clarity on it, and I would like an answer from the CEO about uh, will she be used to us more than once a year at full Anybody else got any statement to make? Um, Constable, this is your question and answer session. So, yeah, yeah that, that's very much what I'm saying. And thank you for using some of the words you're using now, so you do not please then say to us when they start using like garbage and poo poos. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, members of this council, the elected Islam and the general public must all be fully aware of having heard the very the council's financial management is failing has failed, to be put right. The council must change both its operations and its plans. A period of financial uncertainty uh, exists, and our practices of planning are not sustainable. The council does not change its money that it thought it could have. We've already mentioned that the council has uh, issued a statement. Uh, saying that uh, savings of some £16 million pounds in the current year will be necessary for another £18 million in the next year. This is the It's the same I've seen in standard in the council in 2003, it happened when our um, reserves were around a quarter of a million pounds at that time. Uh, the current leader was the deputy leader, so I say I've done people of the time and myself who are still here and remember that. 2000 stores and in year budget issues and major cuts uh, resulted. We embrace ourselves on the fact that a, a root and branch restructuring and elimination of the council's plans are now necessary. The process of learning will be expensive. And that will cost the region of around uh, £450,000. That is £700,000 has been provided for the, the, the changes. Uh, we must be prepared to scrutinise the changes to make sure that they're done in the best interest of the people of SLAM. Must welcome the changes and the openness that results. Thank, Thank you. you, Councillor Smith. Councillor Swindlehurst. Oh, I simply had a, a point of personal explanation, Mr. Mayor, as my name was mentioned. Um, the, the year Smith was referring to was 2001. It may not have been reported until two or three, but it was a year when I was not a member of the council. Um, the social services issue that he refers to where we had to, as I understand it, remove some uh, money from reserves to pay for an overspend uh, was the 2001-2 year and I didn't join the council until May 2002. Um, so I think he's just misremembered and I'd just be grateful uh, if he sticks facts therefore rather than trying to smear me with misinformation when I wasn't even elected. Thank you, Councillor Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd just like to say the council is responsible for the town and its residents. 
this is not a game of monopoly in which we can choose to buy whatever land we see fit in whichever town. This is not a municipal error, it was the response that was given to me. This is real life and this will lead to serious implications. Do you have expertise or actions by who? With how much, but what I haven't heard is who's taking responsibility. I would like to understand who who is signing off reports led to this point. Surely the Section 151 officer and the Finance Department could not have been operating in isolation for the last three years, three or more years, I should say. Now, I fix this and at a huge cost. My concern is that, and that of and how this was allowed to happen, and who is ultimately responsible for these huge and as I said, on lives of residents we stand to I am contacted by a resident who is a financial accountant. I read to you her words. The worst I have ever seen. I was talking about a one man has grown suddenly over a year or two and tried to do its own accounts without an accountant or bookkeeper. It would be more understandable. She would be happy to come into the council and help sort out the reconciliations and processes. This is her key strength, and she recognised that a robust project team this is will not have. Instead, every resident will be severely impacted, and they will have no say. Somebody needs to be held accountable. If we were not in this council, if we were in a business environment, somebody would be held account, and that needs to be held. I happened here. Not any more um, speakers. Can I ask for a vote, please? May I use my right to speak? Then it's all right if that's the end of the item. In terms of responsibility, obviously, the errors first appear in our 2017 accounts uh, when there was a, a different composition of administration in place here. Uh, unfortunately, the same error was tracked through by the same officers appointed again. By in that period, um, in the 19 accounts, and then we've had a whole range of sort of own process about creating documents required to have a process that gave, gave robust accounts for that financial year and indeed the subsequent ones. Um, the local government association is very clear that senior members are supposed to provide political direction, democratic accountability, uh, and try and implement uh, priorities that they set politically for the council. Since I became leader at the end of 2017, I have tried to do that. That's not to say that we don't take responsibility as the administration sorting out the issues that we have now discovered. Uh, and uh, as the opposition constantly points out, we are in control of the council. Uh, the, the Labour group will take the actions required uh, to deal with this. We had finance split between several portfolios in the cabinet previously and certainly during that year. Uh, in the reshuffle that I've just conducted, I've taken full responsibility for the national government portfolio going forward in terms of economic governance uh, to make sure that the grip is there and that there is clear accountability. Previously, we had strategic uh, finance in terms of the overall uh, MTFS planning and things in my portfolio and some of the operational finance in other portfolios. We have corrected that error so it's much clearer in terms of who is the elected member the elected, uh, trying to drive these improvements. Uh, we will implement all of the auditors' recommendations set out in six to, pages six to nine of their reports uh, in full. And it is working out that at, the point, at the end of the year, just finished, we had a £2.8 billion pound under March 2021, and that money has already been uh, moved to reserves to try and make sure that, although clearly as a consequence of the accounting error, we sailed very close to the wind, that we are already beginning the process trying to uh, make sure we have a little bit more slack going forward. Undoubtedly, more issues emerge, and we will have to deal with those, but we are at the beginnings now of the to deal with this. On the 9th and 10th, the audit published to us their final report, at which point they confirmed the tracking of some of the areas they've begun um, to show to us. Uh, and we had a duty then to publish within a month uh, statements uh, and stuff to council. We have done that in a matter of days rather than in a month to show that we need to clean this up and sort it out now. Um, political parties set out their stalls all across uh, this election. And because the draft audit report was made in March, 
if the issues were well aired. I have my Conservative leader that came to see my door here um, talking about Labour's billion pound debt, um, all the financial problems, uh, all over it, embellished in some uh, uh, colour, uh, and some of it not actually Fine, correct. Uh, 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 the result is, people had their choice at the election. Oh, so oh, we, will now, we will now do that well. Thank you. Now, so I can um, ask people, those in favour of the resolutions. Well, in that case, Mr. Chairman, please council business for this evening, and uh, thank you very much.